Good evening, Agile acquisition enthusiasts, and welcome back to the Underground Digital Tiki Bar. It is Friday night. It has been another long week of fixing procurement in the federal government, and that means it's time for an episode of Agile Acquisitions and Alcohol. So cheers. All right, let's get started. So for tonight's episode, I want to talk about the key roles and responsibilities in the acquisition process. Who's who in the acquisition world? And I think it's really important to understand where these different roles are, where they come from, and who's responsible for what. So the first one I want to talk about is the source selection official. The source selection official, according to the FAR, is responsible for overseeing the overall acquisition, the source selection plan, the evaluation criteria, and ultimately determining that and determining which vendor is selected for award. This is sometimes the contracting officer, but it's not always. And many times I've seen in agencies for large acquisitions, this is elevated to a senior executive with oversight to the general area of interest. The next role is the contracting officer. This is the individual, as I've mentioned before, that is ultimately responsible for scope, cost, and period of performance for a contract during execution. But they're also a key uh, figure in the source selection process overseeing the day-to-day -day activities, ensuring everything is done ethically and consistent with the source selection plan. And this person has the oversight and determination of who has access to what information, the single point of contact for industry during the source selection process. The next position is the program manager. Program managers are not always involved in the actual source selection process, but they are typically the individual that originated the requirement, contacted the contracting office to initiate the activity and receive the program after execution. Then we have the COR, Contracting Officer Representative, sometimes referred to as a COTR. This is an individual whose responsibilities are delegated from the contracting officer via a letter of delegation for administrative duties that would otherwise fall to the contracting officer. Even though they're delegated by the contracting officer, they are generally working closely with the program manager, dealing with day-to-day -day activities. Sometimes this includes approving invoices, accepting delivery, security personnel processing and activities related to uh, overseeing the day-to-day -day technical execution of the project. But this also depends on the size of the program. For very, very large programs, you might find a single COR with many individuals underneath them called technical monitors. Tec technical monitors are not identified in the FAR. They are something that many agencies use and, and one that can be critically important for monitoring day-to-day -day activities within their areas of specialty. I should point out that a CO, a PM, and a COR or COTR all have very specific certification requirements and processes and continuing education requirements. Tech monitors do not necessarily have those. Some agencies have created them and they are a good idea to make sure that those that are tech monitors understand that what their duties are and how they're expected to execute them. And of course, the most important role in all of this is the users. This is not an official role, but of course this is the most important from defining requirements there should be users involved in the source selection process, at least the subject matter experts, and then of course during execution. You will notice there are two roles that did not identify that are critical to agile development programs. These are product owners and design leads. These are not official government positions. They are not positions that are typically found in the government either, but they ought to be, especially as we move towards agile adoption. In my personal opinion, the product owner, who is most likely not the program manager, have very different roles. The product owner should be delegated the, the single per point of empowerment and decision making for the product design and, and uh, implementation. The program manager should be responsible for ensuring resources are made available, including funding, personnel, equipment, and access. These are my two cents on this. I hope you're enjoying these, the, these points and you're finding them valuable. This concludes this episode. If you like them, Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what else you'd like to hear me talk about, and of course, subscribe. And until next week, cheers.